welcome. Using a series of real-world examples, I'm going to show you how to rapidly generate great-looking titles, graphic elements, and effects directly inside your Avid timeline using Titler Pro from New Blue FX. In these tutorials, we'll be focusing on using Titler Pro version 1 with Avid Media Composer version 6. Sometimes we need to work with custom letters or logo elements, or maybe we need to use images and text together. Titler Pro is just as fast and easy to use for these purposes as it is for creating text and shapes. In this next example, I have an audio sting on A1 and A2, and then above that on V1, I have a Titler Pro effect that I've already done some work on. You can see the company name at the top there, Bloomcast Consulting, and then near the bottom edge of the screen, I have four phases of media production. Prep, production, post, and distribution. Let's enter effects mode and open up the Titler Pro interface. Here in the timeline area, you'll see that we have our text objects for the words prep, production, post, and distribution. We also have another text object for the word consulting. But as you'll see, the object that represents Bloomcast does not have the letters Bloomcast on the clip in the sequence. Now I point this out because this is telling us that the Bloomcast object is not in fact made up of text created in Titler Pro. Instead, when we have custom fonts or perhaps logos made out of shapes, or even, as in this case, where one of the letters is customized, then in these cases, Titler Pro allows us to import each part of the logo as an individual image file. You can then put each of the image files into a paragraph. Once you have your logo elements in a paragraph, then it's easy to treat the object like any other paragraph in Titler Pro and apply the full range of effects and transitions available. For example, if I go to Transitions here and I choose the Starter Pack and I get a 3D wiggle, um, maybe I'll choose this one here, Metal Wash. So even though I imported each of the letters of Bloomcast independently, I'm able to affect all of them at the same time by having them in their own paragraph. Now I will trim the head of the consulting paragraph. There we go, and apply a simple fade in. So back to the library, to transitions, to animations, and then let's just choose fade in there. Okay, I like that. Now what I'd like to do is add some extra dimension to what I'm creating. So I'll use the same technique as with the Bloomcast letters. I'll start by importing four images representing each phase of production. I'm gonna to go to File and to Import Image, and then I'm going to import them in reverse order so that the image I want to use first is on top and visible once I'm done. So I started with image four, next image three, then image two, and finally image one. As it stands, each of these objects is now independent. You can see each one has its own layer in the timeline area. Now that's not what I want. So what I'm gonna do is create a new paragraph and I'm gonna select the topmost image and I'm gonna use Command X to cut it and now I'm going to re-highlight the paragraph and Command V to paste. The first image is now in the paragraph. Let's just move the paragraph slightly up out of the way. Select the second image. Let's cut it. And select the paragraph and paste. The third image, select, cut. Select the paragraph, paste. And then the final image, cut. Select the paragraph and paste. Now we can reposition and rescale uh, the object like so. I'm actually going to uh, scale it up and then also stretch it back out. The images have uh, had their aspect ratio changed. Now I will trim up this paragraph of images in the timeline so that it begins at the same time as the first word down here, prep. Next, I want to transition the images in, so I'll go back to the library, to transitions, animations, and I'm going to preview in the turn category, and I can have the images turning together, or maybe we'll go one by one like this. And I want to trim the transition so that it occurs during the type-ons for prep, production, post, and distribution. Finally, I want to add a white outline with some thickness to each of the four images. By doing this, I can create a bounding box around the images. 
Now, not all of them need it, but there are a couple here um, that are cropped. And so it's going to look a lot better, as you can see now, with those white bounding boxes around there um, with just a little bit of thickness on each, as you can see. So once I'm done, exit back to Media Composer, choose the effect, render, and now we can play back in context. Tuttler Pro is capable of just some wonderful things, very simple, very powerful. <laughs>